What's up everyone, my name is Mr. H and today we're gonna to talk about microphones. We're gonna talk about how they work and the different types. So there are three defining characteristics of a microphone. You have the transducer type, the frequency response, and the polar pattern. Now, what does a microphone do? What is its job? Its job is to take vibrational energy from the air and turn it into an electrical signal that can be used uh, to be amplified or recorded. So anytime you're taking energy from one state to another, you're using what's called a transducer. And there are a few different transducer types for microphones, but we're gonna be dealing with the two most common, dynamic and condensers. This is probably the most popular microphone in the world. It is a Shure SM58. It is a dynamic microphone. This is its uh, other brother, and this is a Shure SM57. It's probably the second most uh, commonly used microphone in the world. They're both dynamic microphones. They're bulletproof. They're workhorses. You can find them everywhere. Let's figure out how they work. Now, a dynamic microphone is kind of like a generator. And if you remember from physics class, if you have a magnetic field and you move a coil of wire around a magnetic field, you create electricity. That's how generators work. Um, if you go backwards, that's how motors work. And that's how dynamic microphones work. Actually, dynamic microphones are mini generators. I have a dynamic microphone right here. It's a model of one. Um, so inside of a dynamic microphone, you have the capsule. And the capsule has three main parts. You have the magnet, um, which is this can of tomato paste. You have the voice coil, which is this coil. Uh, and then you have the diaphragm. Now the diaphragm is made out of something lightweight. Um, usually it's mylar, which is a really thin plastic. So what happens is sound energy hits the diaphragm. I'm going to throw some picks it, my, my diaphragm, which vibrates the voice coil around the magnet and that creates an electrical signal. Now that electrical signal is super, super faint. It's at what's called mic level and it's kind of unusable. You can't amplify it right away. You can't record it right away. It's just too faint. So what you have to do is you have to pre-amplify it, um, which brings it to line level. And then once it's there, you can record it or you can amplify it for live sound, which is awesome. So that's how a dynamic microphone works. And there are a bunch of different types of dynamic microphones. Here is a Shure SM7B. You saw the Shure SM58 and the Shure SM57, but there are a whole bevy of dynamic microphones. So let's talk about the other type of transducer, and that is the condenser microphone. So here is the capsule of a condenser microphone. And just like with a dynamic microphone, you have the diaphragm. So there's the diaphragm. Um, this is mylar that is plated in a really thin coating of gold. But behind that diaphragm is a back plate. And that back plate is electrified. It's electrified with 48 volts of electricity. And that's called phantom power. So if you see a little button on an interface or a mixer, it says plus 48V that's phantom power. So you need phantom power to run these. Uh, but what happens is when that diaphragm moves, the distance between the electrified backplate and the diaphragm changes, and that creates an electrical signal. So we're going to use a snare drum to visualize how that works. So think about the, the batter head of a snare drum. This is where you would actually hit the drum. Think about that being the diaphragm. And think about the resonant head or the snare side head. That is the uh, back plate, which is electrified with, I've got to throw the switch with phantom power. All right, so what happens is the uh, sound energy hits that diaphragm. The changing of distance between the back plate and the diaphragm creates an electrical signal. I know this isn't the, the, per, the perfect analogy for it, but at least you can kind of get an idea. Now diaphragms for condenser microphones come in different sizes. This is a large diaphragm uh, condenser microphone and this is a small diaphragm condenser microphone. So the smaller the diaphragm size, the faster it can respond and that makes it better for like acoustic guitars and cymbals for drum overheads. But um, large diaphragm microphones are great for the voice because it is better at replicating those low frequencies. It's easier to move the diaphragm of a condenser microphone because it doesn't have all this extra stuff to move around like in a dynamic microphone, which means it's more sensitive. It can pick up quieter sounds. It also means that it can pick up more frequencies. Um, so you would think that we should use condenser microphones all the time. They're more sensitive. It can be farther away. Not 
always. So if you're in a live situation, let's say you're in a, a band and you're singing vocals for a band, you don't want to hear the crowd. You don't want to hear the drummer behind you. You just want to hear you. And that's why dynamic microphones are really used to isolate sounds. So if you want to get individual drums um, in, a, in a live mix, you're going to use dynamic microphones. If you are singing in a band, you're going to use a dynamic microphone. Dynamic microphones are also a little cheaper. So let's do a little test. So I have a dynamic microphone. This is a Shure SM58. Now a 58 and a 57 are really similar. The difference between them is that there is a pop filter that's built into a 58. A pop filter um, keeps the wind from plosive consonants like p. Oh, well, I had some wind in there. And b. And it, it doesn't allow it to really punch the diaphragm that much. Um, so this is a dynamic microphone and I'm going to slowly move the microphone away from my voice and you can hear what happens. It immediately rolls off. There's kind of a sweet spot here. If I go too close, you get something called the proximity effect, which makes your voice really, really boomy and stuff, which is great for ASMR and some podcasts. But normally uh, with the dynamic microphone, you want to keep like about maybe three inches away to get the best sound. Now let's switch to a condenser microphone. All right, so here we have a condenser microphone. This is a Shure SM81, and I'm going to talk and move the microphone away. You can hear that the sound uh, didn't roll off just as crazy as it did for the Shure SM58. Because this is a condenser microphone, I did have to put on phantom power, but you hear there is no Oh boy, sorry about that. There is no built-in pop filter, so you'd have to use a pop filter. This is a pop filter. Put it in front. Pop, 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 pop. It keeps the air from hitting that diaphragm um, and from making that horrible sound. The second defining characteristic of a microphone is its frequency response. Remember, we hear from 20 hertz to 20 thousand hertz and different sound sources are going to have different frequencies right now you can hear my voice and you can see which frequencies are being excited uh, this is what happens when i play guitar different frequencies so different microphones have different frequency responses based on their use we show the frequency response for different microphones using a frequency uh, response graph like this. So in this graph, we're able to see, you know, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. And then we're able to see the uh, the decibels here, the amplitude. Now for this microphone, this is the Shure SM81, it's this one. Uh, you'll notice that there's like three lines here. It's because on the actual microphone itself, there is this switch. This sh switch allows you to change uh, the low frequency characteristic of the microphone, which can be handy in certain situations. Maybe you're miking a flute and there's like an upright bass player behind the flute. You don't want to hear all the low frequencies. You just want to hear the high frequencies. Or um, if you're doing vocals and you don't want to hear the, the rumble of the HVAC system, you want to use that uh, little switch. And, and that's called a high pass filter. High pass filter allows high frequencies to pass. All right, so let's look more at this. This is a flat frequency response. Um, so let's look at if you didn't engage the switch, there is a slight roll off on the, uh, the, the low frequencies because this is a smaller diaphragm condenser microphone. If it was a larger one, you could have some more low frequencies in there, but it's pretty flat up here. And then there's a tiny dip right at the top. Um, so this microphone is great for getting a natural sound. And you would think like, let's get natural sounds of everything. That's great. But that's not always the case. If you're thinking about a mix, if you're thinking about a band, you don't want all of the instruments to use all the frequencies. You want to have some frequencies that are cut um, so that other frequencies can come through. And that's where a microphone like uh, SM58 kind of shines. Now, because of the inefficient nature of a dynamic microphone transducer, uh, the, there's going to be a roll off at the low frequencies and a roll off at the high frequencies. Now, what's cool about an SM58? SM58 is you have kind of a bump right here and that's those are important frequencies for the human voice that's where um, some of the presence and some of the air is it's not where your regular voice is but it's where like the the consonants and and some of the higher overtones are and this is a very nice curve for the voice and this is a very good mic for the voice now let's look at this one what 
what's going on here? Now, like I said before, when we were, um, when I was really tight up close to that 58, there's something called proximity effect. When you're closer to a microphone, um, you get more low frequencies. This one shows, um, I know this one's a little blurry, but this one shows like what the low frequency response is at certain distances. So like right there, at an eighth of an inch, three millimeters away, there's this huge bump in low frequencies. And then there's a dip, and then there's like a, 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 a crest here, and then it kind of falls off. First of all, can you guess what kind of transducer this is? Is this a condenser or is this a dynamic microphone? I don't know, it's this one right here. It's, it's a pretty big old boy. Um, this microphone, it's a, it's a dynamic microphone. It has a, a larger, um, diaphragm in it to handle high sound pressure levels. Why do you think it needs to handle high sound pressure levels? Why are the low frequencies super important? Because this is a kick drum mic. Um, so this is a highly tailored frequency response for this microphone. And you can see like the information that you would need from a kick drum mic is that low thump. But why the heck would you need this? You need this because not only is it that low thump, you need the attack of the kick drum, which comes from these frequencies. So the frequency response of this microphone is highly tailored to a kick drum. So different microphones have different frequency responses for their different use cases. The final defining characteristic of a microphone is its polar pattern. Now a polar pattern shows the directionality of a microphone. And we're gonna start with the least directional polar pattern. We're gonna start with the omnidirectional polar pattern. So in an omnidirectional polar pattern, the microphone picks up sound from everywhere, from behind, from the side, from the front, and it does it at a relatively similar volume level. So this is an example of an omnidirectional mic. This is a lapel mic. So a lapel mic can be clipped to a shirt, it can go underneath the shirt, um, and it's normally used for video. And you don't wanna have to worry about your talent uh, turning their head when they're talking, or you don't wanna have to worry about the direction of the microphone. You want it to be pretty much the same. You want a consistent pickup pattern of the voice, and that's where the omnidirectional shines. Omnidirectional mics are also used for um, broadcast interviews, like the big Pat Sajak microphone. Uh, that is an omnidirectional microphone. Hanging mics are omnidirectional microphones. And it's great because you're picking up all the sound. But what if you want a little more directionality? Um, like let's say you are singing in your Nickelback cover band and you don't want to hear the sound of the crowd, you're gonna use something like a cardioid polar pattern. So our Shure SM58, this is a cardioid polar pattern. So let's look at how a polar pattern chart works. Um, so it's as if the microphone is facing this way. Um, so there's like the subject and this is the pickup area right there. Um, you notice that with a cardioid polar pattern there all the stuff from behind is kind of canceled out and there's a, a sweet spot here which is pretty wide for uh, the pickup um, and that's good for if you are you know singing and maybe you're not 100% perfect, um, you're still gonna get picked up by this type of mic and that's a cardioid polar pattern. If you want more directionality, um, there are different flavors of the cardioid polar pattern. Um, we have hypercardioid and supercardioid. So um, if you notice that they are similar to the cardioid polar pattern, you know, we have this, you know, this, this pickup pattern in front, which is actually a little narrower, but then that also creates this kind of node in the back. So there is a very faint pickup pattern in the back. Um, and then you can get super, super, super tight with a hypercardioid polar pattern. Now, some uses for a hypercardioid or supercardioid polar pattern. Um, if you are doing dialogue inside, you would use a hypercardioid mic. If you want to just pinpoint certain parts of a drum kit, like just the hi-hat, you would use a hyper or supercardioid mic. The next microphone pattern, I don't personally have one of these, but this is a figure eight mic, and it's kind of easy to see. I mean, if you understand how to read these charts, it's easy to see what's going on here, it's called a figure eight or a bi-directional microphone. It's picking up um, sound from both sides. And why would you need this? Well, if you had one mic and you need to do an interview, you could put that mic in between the two people and then it would pick up uh, sound from both sides. There's also a couple stereo microphone techniques which use uh, a microphone that has a bi-directional or a figure eight polar pattern. And that allows uh, to create a, a really nice stereo image. So the last and most directional polar pattern pattern uh, of a microphone is the shotgun mic. So I have a shotgun mic right here. Um, let's look at the polar pattern really quick. So it is super, 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 super directional. 
Um, and then there are these tiny nodes at the sides and in the back. You can barely notice those, but you've probably seen these. You might not have seen these like this. You've probably seen them with big puffy tubes around them. Um, so what, what happens is they're suspended in a, in a suspension mount inside this thing called a blimp. And then the puffy thing is called a dead cat. Sorry, cat lovers. It's called a dead cat, and that keeps wind noise from getting into the microphone because they are sensitive, and they're really good for picking up dialogue outside. If you don't want to get the sound of construction behind you, this is so directional that, you know, just point it right, you know, you want to point it from above and you're pointing it kind of right here and then uh, it's going to really pick up your talent well. Um, so these things in the sides, this is called an interference tube, and that's what gives it its directionality. Now, shotgun mics aren't usually used for musical situations, but um, if you know NPR's Tiny Desk Concert, you'll know what this microphone looks like from there. Uh, they use a stereo shotgun mic to record their concerts. So we're going to do a super scientific test to show the directionality of these microphones. I'm going to show the microphone like this, and then I'm going to play a song on my phone and we are going to move it around and then you can listen to you know what the pickup pattern is. So we're going to start off with the most directional microphone and then we're going to move our way back to the omnidirectional microphone. So here's a shotgun mic. Here is a cardioid mic. And here's an omnidirectional mic. It's right there. So different combinations of those characteristics give you different mics that are great for different situations. Now microphones can range in cost greatly. Um, you can buy a microphone for 10 bucks on Amazon and you can spend many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars on microphones um, to get the sound you want. But my recommendation is get a 58 or a 57, a Shure SM58 or 57 if you're starting. You can, you can use them for pretty much anything and they're super durable. I still have mine from when I was a kid. Um, but we haven't talked about a couple things, so we're going to use this microphone to talk about those things. Um, we haven't talked about shock mounts, so this microphone is on a shock mount. This is a Shure KSM um, 42 microphone. It's on a shock mount so that you know, if the microphone vibrates, that handling noise is not going to be picked up by the microphone. It also has a built-in pop filter, so let me put that pop filter on. The pop filter actually goes onto the shock mount of this microphone. And we're going to end this video by just doing a comparison of some good mics for voice. We're going to start off with the Shure SM58, then we're going to go to an SM7B, and then we're going to give this KSM42 a listen. So here is a Shure SM58. This is what it sounds like for talking, and this is what it sounds like for singing. I love my microphones. I love my microphones. And a little farther away, this is what it sounds like for talking. This is what it sounds like for singing. I love my microphones. I love my microphones. This is a Shure SM7B. It's a broadcast microphone, but it's also used for some vocals. This is what it sounds like if I'm talking close. And I love my microphones, I love my microphones. And this is what it sounds like if I'm a little farther away. Now this has a larger diaphragm and it's a dynamic mic. That means it really puts out a low signal. I have to use actually a separate preamp plus my preamp to make sure that this mic is loud enough. Now this is a Shure KSM42 large diaphragm condenser microphone. It's side address. That means that you have to talk into the side of the microphone. Just make sure you're talking into the right side of the microphone. Normally there is a little picture of the polar pattern or the logo of the company there to help you out. Um, so this is what it sounds like when I'm talking close. This is what it sounds like when I'm talking farther away. And this is what it sounds like for singing. I love my microphones. I love my microphones. And that's it for microphones. Uh, hopefully knowing those three defining characteristics will help you choose the correct microphone for your situation. Good luck, and we'll see you in the shed.